Okay, we're going to go over concepts in art. This is very important for your, if you're AP and you need to do your sustained, sustained investigation, or you're in art theory and you're working on work, um, your thematic series. First, we're going to start on what is a concept. A concept is a refined idea. An idea is a great starting point. You have to have ideas in order to begin it, but to make it into a concept, you need to take time to research and refine this idea in order to really make it your own. That's how it becomes a concept. It's very important to work with concepts in your artwork because it is how artists elevate their ideas. Um, basically, the point is to go from being something that is decorative and done const and overdone into something that is thought provoking and compelling. You want people to pay attention to your artwork that way. So how do we turn an idea into a concept? Well, it's a very simple process, but it will involve a lot of critical thinking. So the very first step is to start with an idea. May, the best thing to do is just make a list of kind of general ideas that you kind of want to work for, work towards, and make some thumbnails for kind of what the general look of them you feel should be. If you, this is a good place to play with your inspiration, get creative, things like that. Then after you've done that, we can go towards the next step. Once you've narrowed down exactly which idea you want to work with, you need to start the refining process by asking yourself a few very key questions in order to refine it much more. The first one we're going to talk about is what do you want to say? That is one of the bigger questions out of these four to really think about. You really want to get this down because it's what your work is about. This is your voice coming through this subject matter here. You need to really refine this one question down and make it as clear and succinct as possible. The next question is why do you want to work on this? There was something about this subject matter that really drew you in and you need to really elaborate on exactly what it was about this project that drew you into it. What about it really speaks to you and makes you want to speak about this work and create artwork surrounding it? You have to have some form of driving force behind your work. The next question is, who is the audience to your work? Now, that basically means who are you directing your work towards? Is it people of your oh, same age group? Is it older adults? Is it dedicated to the public? Or is it something very personal? Don't think about it in terms of Miss Allen or AP jurors or, you know, general around the school. That's not what we mean here. What we mean by that is your work is speaking to somebody. You're trying to get your voice out there to someone of your opinions and why this concept, what this concept means to you and how you're trying to get a message across. So whoever your audience is are the people you're wanting to direct that message towards. That's probably the better way to explain and pick out who your audience is going to be. Lastly, how are you going to get your point across visually? That's the big word here is visually. You're not going to be having this in a text format, in a speaking format where you're speaking directly. You have to get this across just using visuals and nothing that's too, you know, over the head, over the head. So you really have to think about how is your work going to look visually to support your concept? So it's a start. Basically, the questions don't have to end there, but it's a good way to elevate your idea into a concept. The big thing here to know is concepts should be unique to you, your own voice through your artwork. But the problem with that, especially coming into with our with newer artists is and people who are new to this kind of a way of working is that there is a bit of a dark side. People tend to fall into the areas of cliche. That's a word that we also use in English classes. It's a phrase or opinion that is overused and betrays a lack of original thought. 
a lot of high school students do a lot of things that are very cliche. And I can tell you as an art teacher, I've seen them all. You know, how many times am I going to see a skull with a dagger and, you know, at a, maybe a dagger stabbed through a heart, eyes crying blood, um, a tropical sunset, or somebody just expressing their sadness through the color black. It's very common, and I know many of you are feeling very called out right now, but at this level, we need to really try to avoid the cliche as much as possible. Big cliches in art include sunsets, emotions, flowers, etc. It's so many things that you can really just think of that you've seen you, you and your classmates have probably drawn. I can't say anything. I've done it too. Now, this artwork tends to come off as shallow. Um, the message is kind of hit you over the head with as blunt as it is. And we really need to kind of work our way past that. So at all, if at all possible, let's really try to avoid these very obvious cliches. Now, there are ways to work around this, and that's what I'm going to show you in this next slide. Here is an artist that's worked their way around the idea of the cliche and to keep it a little deep and take that cliche and make it, you know, deeper. One way to do it is to take that cliche and make it much um, different and to really think about that subject differently. This artist that I'm showing in the background, this is Penelope Umbrico. She's an American artist. She saw how many people were taking photographs of sunsets. Well, what she did is she printed them off and assembled them together into a large installation piece. So this basically, I think she took the images off of Flickr. And then what she did is she kind of assembled them together in multiple installations of this. So this is just photographs upon photographs of sunsets, and there's hundreds of them. She kind of worked with the concept, instead of taking the sunset, she worked with the concept of how many people were taking the same photograph or and how different they look from each other. Now, this is much more interesting than just the sunset now it's the sunset plus the idea behind so many people taking it and how the, all those people at the same time were working in that same subject matter and just kept adding and adding and adding to this library of sunset photographs so think about it in that manner that it's much deeper than just the sunset moving forward a concept should be a reflection of your own observations. Just like the sunset was, uh, the sunset photographs were of Penelope Umbrico, your concept should be a reflection of your observation. A good concept will cause your audience to think and reflect upon what you are really trying to say. That's your goal here, is to make people think. So now let's talk about subject and actual subject. What we see before us here is a jellyfish swimming through the ocean. No big deal. Something that's pretty typical. That is our subject. That's what we see before us. Our actual subject appears when we notice that the jellyfish has a bag on its head. The actual subject is your message behind your work. Your subject should be shallow and enough to catch attention. Your actual subject is deep. An important thing to remember here is that your final product does not have to be beautiful for your concept to be well done. Take, for example, the toaster project. This guy spent nine months making a toaster from scratch. And it's not very pretty, and it only worked for about five seconds, but it really gets across the concept, uh, his original concept. And we'll go in more in depth over his stuff later. As we start this journey of creation, please understand that you will be expected to think critically about things you never thought about before. Research will be necessary to find out the weird and wondrous facets of our world. Our purpose here is to express that visually. Let's work and create amazing artwork with very strong concepts.